Welcome to Weld.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG. Now today we're not TIG welding, but I'm actually going to show you how to do plasma cutting. And it becomes necessary in your everyday fabrication. So I want to show you a, a, a typical plasma cutting head, a torch, and a components. Because when you go to get one of these, you need to know why do I need a big one or a small one? Uh, should I buy one that's 115 volts or 220 volts? Well, let me go through that with you. First, first of all, there's a lot of plasma cutters out there. So just pick one that works, try it out, test it. That's what I'm doing right here, right now. Uh, this particular unit is a 220 volt unit and it's designed to cut not only sheet metal, but it's also designed to cut inch, inch and a quarter steel. Now, I don't have a need to do that. So would I buy this for my home use? And, and probably not. I would uh, probably go closer to light industrial. But nonetheless, it's still a plasma cutting torch. And I want you to take a, a look at all the components because that becomes pretty critical. When you wear these out, you have to go buy them. You gotta make sure that your supply house has them. So I just wanna point out that I'm getting ready to do a demonstration where I'm cutting pretty thin sheet metal. So I could probably find a machine that will do that that runs off 115, but this is a this is a pretty robust machine, so it'll handle all of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my safety gear on. Uh, make sure you put uh, uh, eyewear on because you could get some um, sparks flying back at you. But uh, I'm also going to take the torch head off so you can see the components that you have to use, and they do wear out, and it uh, depending on how many hours you put on them. So let me get my gear on. Let me take the torch head apart and I'll show you what I've got. Okay, now I've, I've taken this torch completely apart. I want to show you the components that wear out the most, or I should say first. And this particular component is like a contact tip and it'll actually wear out at the very end and you'll have to replace it periodically. So slide it into place. Just a slight tighten. Put the insulator in place. Okay, now this component right here is the one that really is the one that causes the curve for how sharp of a cut you've got. And if you look real close, right in the center, there's a hole, and it'll eventually start wallowing out, and your cut will get wider and wider and wider, and you have to decide when to change it. But uh, that's the number one consumable. And I've got an insulator here that goes in place, holds everything in compression. Now, if you'll notice, I've got one more component sitting here, and that really is a little offset tool. And all that does is when you put it on your torch, it keeps you from, from going metal to metal when you pull the trigger, and it'll save the life of this tip. So I'll go ahead and I'll put it on, and you can see that it'll, it'll keep it up off the material that you're about to cut. Now, you get into some real critical applications, you can take this off, and, uh, but you'll, you'll lose the life of that tip. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna walk around, I'm gonna show you, there's only a couple of settings on this machine. Okay, when you, when you take a look at this machine, there's a setting there for air, and we're gonna turn that on in a minute, but this is probably the most critical part. This machine will not work until you reach about 35 PSI, and I think the, uh, I think the instructions give you a range 35 up to 75 PSI, so you can get some pretty good force through that tip. Uh, this right here, and I'm going to turn the I'm going to turn the machine on. Uh, this is the amperage that the that the machine has. Okay, so you have a 70 amp machine that'll cut some pretty heavy duty material. When I'm doing sheet metal type work. I, I'm somewhere down into the 20 amps, and it'll cut 16 gauge, so you can see there's a vast range. Okay, here's a couple of settings that I like to use. One is 2T. Just put it on 2T instead of 4T. This is for manual use right now, and you know you can check the pilot arc and trigger this to the top, but I always like to keep it in normal. And then over here you can do the, the air flow test. When you hit this, it's going to shoot air through the nozzle just so you can hear it and see that everything's functioning. 
go ahead and put it back to normal. Okay, so once we have everything in place here, got the amperage set, got the air flowing, then all you have to do is pull this little safety device down and pull the trigger and very shortly it's going to shoot it's going to shoot an arc and i'm going to start cutting at about a 15 degree angle once i get penetration then it's going to be a square cut all the way through okay i've got my guide in place i've got my steel it's about 16 gauge and that's what i do an awful lot of so i've got the machine set at 25 amps uh, should be adequate to get through this material so I'll go ahead and I'll hit my, uh, my pre-purge, 15 degree angle. Okay, I made a, a plasma cut on this steel and it's actually pretty clean but you need to know that there's still a recast layer on there a little bit of decarb and you either need to file it down or sand it or grind it off and it's not very thick but every metal that you cut has a little different uh, appearance to it steel is pretty easy to grind off when you do aluminum the kerf on it's not as clean but you know the plasma cutting actually will cut just about any metal so uh, make it a versatile tool for you and uh, if you have any critical applications, make sure that you get enough of that recast off that you're not going to cause a welding problem. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.